It is May 25th, 2024, and what that means is we are going to do another presidential election predictive map. We're going to be predicting how I think the presidential election would is going to shake out, not if it were held today, uh, but how it's going to shake out in November. Because, spoiler alert, if it was held today, it would be a landslide for Trump, per the polling anyway. But we're going to predict how I think the race is going to shake out in November. I did one of these back in, I guess it was March, and so we're doing another one now in May. Without further ado, let's get into it. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Okay, as you can see, we have our different categories here. Tilt, leans, likely, and safe. How we're going to rate it is tilt is going to be within, you know, point, you know, 50% basically of each vote. Uh, no, I don't like that. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, we have our four categories. Safe, likely, leans, and tilt. Tilt is from, you know, 50% plus one up to a 1.5% victory. Leans is from 1.5% to three points likely is from three points to six points anything seven and above is safe a lot of people um they tend to put like 10 or 12 is safe in reality if you're winning a state by more than seven or eight points it's safe and it would take a landslide to overcome that so I, i've there's some debate on that you can debate it if you want um i use different sort of ranking categories for safe likely leans and tilt um, in my previous video when I also used RCP polling averages. So just so you know, that's how we're going to rank the safe likely leans until today. And also, when we look at polling, which we will for a couple states, we're going to be using polling from uh, 538 rather than polling averages, I should say, from 538 rather than RCP. Okay, let's get into it, starting with our safe blue states. We'll start northeast and work our way west, because I feel like everyone starts west and works east for some reason in all these videos. So we're going to start over here. Okay, the state of Maine, we're going to do up front, and you know, let's do Maine and Nebraska, since those are our two split uh, vote states. So, Maine as a whole, well, you know, we'll do the safe ones first. District 2 in Maine is going to be safe red, and Nebraska, District 1, and District 3, as well as the state as a whole, are safe red. So, in Maine, uh, you have, you know, these are the two split vote states. By congressional district plus two congressional vote or two electoral votes for the state winner of the state's uh, popular vote, which by the way I think should be implemented in Virginia, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so in Maine, I think the state as a whole is going to go to Biden, but I think we're going to put it as not safe or likely. We're going to put leans Biden. I've seen some different polling on it right now. The polling seems to indicate that Trump has a decent shot at winning the whole state. I'm still guessing it's going to be about a five or so point victory for Biden, so we're going to say uh, it is a, you know, not even leans at that point. I think we'll say it's a likely Biden uh, district um, with the purpose of today's ranking. You know, sometimes I think I should go a little bit higher, you know, likely uh, and safe should be high, higher up, lean should be a little bit more. But like I said, I already explained the polling, uh, explan gave you a polling explanation. That's how we're going to rank for today. So uh, likely for Maine state as a whole and the first congressional district, the uh, a uh, very urban one that's going to go Democrat safely. Uh, Nebraska, the second congressional district, I think, in this environment, which is really bad for Democrats, state as a whole going Republican. I think this might be a year that Maine's, uh, Nebraska's second congressional district flips. I'm not entirely positive about that, but I'm going to rate it right now. Whoops. I'm going to rate it, I think, as leans toward Trump. And that would be a big pickup for him because there is a scenario here in which we could see a tie. Uh, um, in the electoral votes. Okay, we got those two out of the way. Six for Republicans, three for Democrats. Electoral votes, that is. Let's get on with it. New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire, the polling recently has been indicating Biden's holding a steady lead. Um, Trump came very close to beating Clinton in 2016, dropped a lot in 2020. I think Biden's going to win the state again, but probably not by a whole lot. I'm going to say four to five points. So we're going to put it as likely Biden, although it could almost be lean. So we'll say likely Biden. Vermont is going to be safe. Uh, New York is also going to be safe for Biden. There's, you know, some scuttle, but, you know, Trump's going to win New York. Trump's going to win New Jersey. Not happening. Sorry. And it's going to happen by safe margins for the purpose of today's video. Uh, you've got Massachusetts. You've got Rhode Island. You've got Connecticut. Uh, New Jersey, like I said, safe. Biden's home state of Delaware. Uh, Maryland, also going to be safe. Washington, D.C., obviously. I don't think a Republican has ever won Washington, D.C. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. 
That finishes up the eastern coast, putting Biden at 90 votes. Uh, Washington State, there's been some polling recently out showing um, Trump getting closer, even leading. He's not going to win the state. Could he come closer than usual? Yes, and he probably will come closer than usual. Uh, and depending on the ranking system we're using, like last video's ranking system, I don't remember exactly what I used, but it might be likely in that scenario. But again, for the purpose of today, seven points and above being safe, uh, Washington is going to be safe Republican, Oregon, uh, safe Democrat, Oregon, safe Democrat, California, safe Democrat, the most electoral votes in the state, and Hawaii as well, also going to be safe Democrat. <clears throat> so Biden is at 168. That's a pretty good start for him. Let's move on to the safe red states. There's going to be a lot of these. We have Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, wonderful state by the way, Kentucky, and Indiana, and we'll get to some of these in a second. Alaska also going to be a safe Republican. Seems to be trending a little bit toward the left as of late. Alaska, um, however, I do think Mary Peltola is going to lose her re-election bid. Um, I don't think she's actually going to stay as Alaska's uh, congresswoman at large. I think a Republican is going to win that back because Alaska is still a very Republican state. It's leaning a little bit left now, but not enough for Republicans to be worried about yet. Okay, um, so for other safe Republican states, uh, those are your standard ones right there. Also, South Carolina. I forgot about South Carolina and West Virginia. Safe Republican. Um, along with those, Florida is going to be safe Republican. Ron DeSantis uh, overseeing a red wave. Uh, DeSantis 2028. Um, and uh, yeah, he's seen a red wave in Florida. Rubio and DeSantis elected by 18 and 20 points, respectively, roughly. Trump will win that by more than seven. He will win Texas by more than seven, despite a pretty poor showing in 2020 where he only beat Biden by five points. Cruz really underperformed in 2018. I think both Cruz and Trump will win by safe margins. Um, and then let's see if I'm missing anything here. <clears throat> uh, am I missing anything? I don't believe so. Other than safe Democrat, I forgot to add Illinois. So Illinois, safe Democrat. Um, moving on to our likely states, some more likely. Here we've got Colorado, which I'm trying to think. Because safe is seven and above this video, Colorado is going to be safe. I can see Trump keeping New Mexico under seven. So I almost want to put New Mexico as likely Republican. And as a matter of fact, I think I will. I'm going to keep it on the high side of that. Like let's say six and a half to seven points. I'm not going to quite put New Mexico in safe for Biden. We're going to put it as likely. And then for likely Republican, oh, also Virginia will be likely Virginia is going to be about four to five points probably to Biden. It won't be as bad as it's been in years past, such as 2020, but I think uh, Virginia is going to go by Biden, probably about the same margin they went for Hillary. Uh, sadly enough, my home state where I currently reside, likely Democrat. And let's see what else we have here. Minnesota also going to be likely Demi You know, I'm thinking about this. Minnesota likely would be three to six points i believe i said and then seven and up was uh safe so i think minnesota is going to be likely i think biden will probably win it by more than three but i think it's be very on the low side of likely probably like three to three and a half points so that leaves us with one two three four five six seven eight states and that is because north carolina is not yet ranked interestingly enough uh we do have uh, well, no, not North Carolina. I'm going to get North Carolina in a minute. That'll be the first one I get to of the swing states. Ohio is going to actually, I'm going to put in safe Republican. Uh, I think Trump's going to perform very well there. He has recently uh, in both the presidential elections and the Senate election, J.D. Vance. Trump endorsed uh, Bernie Moreno. You see how much the Trump endorsement, how much sway that had there. So I think Ohio is going to be safe red this year after historically being a swing state. You know, as goes Ohio, so goes the nation. We hope so this year. Okay, seven states remaining. What is going to happen? Well, we're going to start off here with some of the states, which I don't expect to be particularly close, but are still considered swing states. First and foremost, North Carolina. You see here we have per 538, Trump leading currently by six and a half points in North Carolina. Not even close. Um, 
I think North Carolina is going to be much better for Trump than it was in 2020. And I think North Carolina is going to go down as a likely Republican state. Not safe, but I think likely is more than reasonable to expect. Um, it definitely is uh, a close state. It's been closed for a long time. It hasn't really trended super far right or super far left. It's just kind of stayed there. I think uh, Mark Robinson has a pretty decent chance of winning for governor in North Carolina um, to succeed Roy Cooper, who has been reasonably popular for some reason. Um, I've heard a theory that Roy Cooper is being the one replacing Biden at the Democrat convention. I guess we could see. Could be. Um, but yeah, I think North Carolina, with its 16 electoral votes, is going to go to Trump. Um, I don't see it being particularly close. Probably, like I said, a likely result. Um, let's say roughly five to six points. Uh, Georgia leading by Trump is leading by 5.6 points per the 538 average, and I think that's extremely interesting because North Carolina right now is polling more conservatively, more Republicanly, however you want to say it, more for Trump than Georgia is. I don't see that happening. North Carolina, like I said, it's going to go back to right, a little bit toward the right from where it was in 2020, but more than Georgia, I don't think so. I'm not convinced Georgia was legit in 2020 um, completely, but... Um, yeah, I, I think Georgia is going to go back to the right pretty hard this year, uh, see, considering what we've seen in Florida. Uh, Brian Kemp is very popular. Uh, that process probably doesn't have a whole lot to do with it, but the point being, Stacey Abrams just got crushed. Yes, they won the Senate seat, but that was you know a little bit of an anomaly. Herschel Walker, not a good candidate. Point being, um, I think Georgia is going to be at least as much, if not more, Republican than North Carolina, also a likely state for Republicans. Uh, yes, let's see. What do we have next? We have, let's move over to Nevada. Six electoral votes, a state I've been predicting since 2022 to go to Republicans. Let's see what 538 has to say. They have a 6.6 .6 lead. You look at that like, oh my gosh, 6.6 .6 lead for Trump in Nevada of all places. You're kidding me. But yes, in Nevada, Trump up 6.6 .6 on average. And there have been some polls uh, like there was that outlier while back, the one that showed Trump winning in Washington, showed him up 13 in Nevada. That's not going to happen. Nevada, though, the more and more polls I'm seeing, I'm, I'm like, whoa, Trump could win this by lean margins, maybe even likely. I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think the polls, like, for instance, in 2022, polls overestimated Republicans in Nevada. I think it's one of the few states where they actually have historically overestimated Republicans. <clears throat> so I think Trump is going to win Nevada, but... I'm going to put it by tilt margins, which is up to one and a half, remember? And I think it probably will be very close to one and a half. I could see it being low leans. We could see it a lean margin, one and a half to three. But right now, we're going to put Nevada in tilt Republican, uh, one and a half to three points. Moving on here, finishing out the Sun Belt, Arizona, sitting at 11 electoral votes. Let's see what's going on there. In the 538 polling averages, we have Trump leading by 4.6 points. Uh, good, much better showing for him than we've seen in uh, historically, uh, such as 2020. You know, he won it in 2016, lost it in 2020 to Biden. Again, may not have been legit. Georgia and Arizona were two of the biggest concerns with fraud. And I will say, I said this in the last video, for those, you know, who fall on either side of the, it definitely wasn't stolen or it definitely was stolen. I think there was certainly fraud. I mean, that's provable. There are certain scenarios where such as in Pennsylvania, they changed the voting rules in contravention of the state's constitution, and courts did nothing about it, just, you know, because, obviously, why not? Um, and then, you know, moving uh, drop boxes from, uh, you know, too far from county registrar's offices, stuff like that went on. That's not even, like, that's provably true. And you can say, you know, the waters, water pipes bursting in the night, and the vote counting stopping, and Trump was in, and then it resumed, and Biden was in. You can say that was all just coincidence, and we're overlooking something, and that's just how it is, and Biden won. You can't disprove those other two things, though. So there was certainly some fraud in 2020. There are in all elections. I think there was more than usual in 2020. Biden may still have won it legitimately. Trump was very unpopular. I'm not convinced that Biden did actually lose the election. There's definitely some fraud. Was it enough to tilt it to Biden from Trump? I'm not sure. Trump did not do himself any favors with people like me and my family with COVID in terms of his, uh, his standing. Point being, I think Arizona... Especially with Maricopa County, may also have been a little bit of a shenanigans in 2022. The election seemed to be cleaner in 2022 than 2020. Arizona, not so much. Uh, but the point being, Carrie Lake did lose that race, and uh, she is polling very badly in the Senate race now. Carrie Lake is not very popular in Arizona. 
although she came really reasonably close in governor, depending on how well Trump does in Arizona, he may be able to um, he may be able to pull Carrie Lake up, and she wins the Senate race. I'm not uh, super hopeful of that right now. Uh, so for now, Trump I think is going to win Arizona by a lean margin, probably right around two to three points. Um, Yes, and I've done. I've already done. I'll try to remember to link it at the end of the video in one of those end cards. I've done both presidential election map before. Like I said, that's kind of outdated now. I also did a Senate election predictive map, and that one also a little bit outdated, but um, still reasonably uh, up to date in that. It was only a couple months old. I'll probably make another Senate and updated Senate video soon, but uh, we'll see. You can go watch that if you want and hear me talk about that. So Trump is at 269 electoral votes. You see how big some of these states, um, some of these places could be, such as look at Maine. If Maine was to flip and the state goes as a whole, Trump wins just with these states down here. As of now, though, he still needs Pennsylvania or Michigan or Wisconsin to keep Biden from getting to 270. Can he do it? Let's see. Moving on next to Pennsylvania, the biggest of the three, 19 electoral votes. Trump currently leads, as you see, 538 says, and on average, Trump leads by 2.2 points. Pennsylvania, it's been leftist as of late. I think it was Josh Shapiro there who ran for governor, if I'm not mistaken. He did not fare well. Fetterman did much better against Dr. Oz than expected by some folks. I expected Fetterman to be Oz. I was not happy with Oz at all. Uh, you know, Mr. Crudite himself. <clears throat> Point being, I think Pennsylvania is going to be very close. As of now, it, I really want to say toss-up, but as you know, with the last video, I didn't allow myself toss-ups. I'm not going to allow myself toss-ups now. With this video, I, I'm not exactly sure where to put Pennsylvania. As of now, I think we're going to put it as tilt, definitely tilt. I think we're going to say tilt blue. I'm not convinced uh, Biden is going to just flat-out lose Pennsylvania. Definitely won't win it by as much as 2020, I don't think, but... I think it's going to be very close. We're going to say Pennsylvania tilts Biden. Michigan. Michigan, Trump currently holds, I believe, his narrowest lead per 538, and that is 0.9 points he leads. Um, Kennedy polling around 8 to 9%, as with most states. Uh, Trump, 41.6, Biden, 40.7. Trump leads by just about 1. <clears throat> Michigan, another very close state in 2020. Certainly could go either way. Um... The Senate race there is very competitive. I'm not exactly sure which way it's going to go. Like I said, the polling's not a whole lot of help right now. And it's difficult. It's definitely a difficult decision. Michigan, the GOP has not been in great shape there as of late. I'm not super uh, optimistic about it. Um, ugh, it it's, a, it's a tough decision. I think what we're going to say, and I'm just realizing I left New York as a Republican. I was wondering why we were at 297. Whoops. Sorry. Apologize about that. Uh... Michigan is going to go right now. If I could leave it as toss-up, I would. It and Pennsylvania. Michigan is going to tilt Democrat, and that's only because of a gut feeling. I'm not positive that it is going to go Democrat. It could go Republican. I think Trump very well could win it. If he wins Pennsylvania, he likely wins Michigan. Uh, you know, Also, vice versa for Biden. If Biden wins Pennsylvania... Trump could still win Michigan. I don't know. It depends. Michigan and Pennsylvania are a bit similar in their voting habits. Um, you know, there's some differences a little bit, but they're very close, very close states. Um, and I think right now I'm going to get them slightly to Biden since I have to pick one way or the other. But <clears throat> man, that that's a tough decision. I would leave it as toss up as I could if I could. Um, for the purposes of today's video, let's say it tilts Biden. If we're trying to be as realistic as possible, because. If we're being completely honest, Trump is going to underperform the polling he has right now, probably. Not completely sure. Historically, polling underestimates Trump. But for instance, seven points in Nevada. He's not going to win by seven. Um, probably not going to win by six and a half or whatever it was in North Carolina. So let's, for now, be very, uh, you know, not too optimistic. Let's try to err on the side of caution if you're looking at a Republican stance. Michigan, Pennsylvania, tilt Democrat. Just to kind of, you know, keep us on our toes. So that leaves Wisconsin. Winner of Wisconsin wins the nation. Wisconsin polling currently has 1.6 point lead for Trump. And you'll see he actually led by more in Pennsylvania. But Wisconsin uh, typically is more conservative than either Michigan or Pennsylvania, uh, I believe. So Wisconsin, I do have a feeling, is going to shift back uh, toward Trump 
even though it probably, or there's a decent chance it won't in uh, the Senate race. I think Tammy Baldwin is reasonably popular. I believe she's running for re-election. So we're going to say Wisconsin tilts Trump, giving him the electoral victory 279 to 259. Very, very close map. You can go watch and see how it compares to my map. Uh, definitely a little bit less optimistic than my map was a couple months ago. Still a very good outlook, though, for Trump and Republicans. Like I said, Michigan, Pennsylvania could go either way. We could see some debate with with Maine, uh, with Nebraska's second, even with some of these other states. We could definitely see some debate. I'd be very interested to hear what states you're watching the closest, what your predictions are for the swing states, the country as a whole, and will the national vote go toward Trump? I think it's going to be very close, but I think it's going to go to Biden uh, between half a point and two points is where the national vote's going to go. But my official prediction as of now is Donald Trump 279, Joe Biden 259, which if we could, we would leave Michigan and Pennsylvania as toss-ups just so y'all can see what that would look like. That would put Trump at 279 and the uh, Biden at 225, 34, uh, you know, 34 uh, electoral votes outstanding. We're going to put Pennsylvania back at tilt there so y'all can get one final look at the map. So there you go. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Uh, I'd be very interested to see what you hear, and I'll be down there in the comments with you, and we can chat. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.